being recorded. So good afternoon, everyone. This is um, Dr. Samah again, and this is the extra class that I promised you. Uh, so what is it that we're doing? We're uh, continuing with theme three, okay? So what do we have on the agenda? We have lots of stuff. Uh, part of them is going to be, uh, you know, content about, um, you know, academic skills. Um, how to uh, perhaps prepare for uh, for a tutorial, what is it that you should do before uh, the, the tutorial starts, what is it that you do during the tutorial, uh, and things of this kind. We're, we're going to also talk about linking words. We have already spoken about them. We're going to perhaps give some more prominence to them uh, for um, the symbol reason that they are very important uh, whether we're talking about presentations that you're giving or um, you know writing that you are developing and uh, you know uh, writing that's writing you write um, okay so let's uh, let's start And this is where we stopped last time. Let me just check that. Um, I spoke about words like advertisements or advertisements, applications, attendance, decision, explanation, measurement, organization, situation, transmission, and behavior. And what did I say about them? In terms of word formation, they are all nouns, right? Uh, in terms of word formation, they all come from a verb stem, from a verb, right? For uh, advertisement, for example, you, the verb would be advertise. For application, you have the verb apply. You apply for a job. You apply for a place uh, in a university. Attendance, obviously, from the word attend. When I say that you guys are attending the class today, attend. Attend would be the verb. Decision from the verb decide, to decide to do something, right? Uh, explanation. Explanation means explaining stuff. Okay, this is exactly what I'm doing. I am explaining stuff to you. So, explain would be the verb. Uh, measurement, measurement to from the verb measure. What is it that you measure? Measure, uh, measure uh, quantities. Okay, so if you're buying something, you sometimes you measure it whether it's in kilos or in uh, liters or uh, in any other measurement, you can also measure if you if you're uh, perhaps uh, uh, making a dress or a suit. I mean, a tailor uh, uh, or a dresser would have to measure you. Take your measurements. Uh, take your measures. I mean, um, I mean in terms of uh, you know height and length and stuff like that. Uh, so organizations from the word organize. Okay, and obviously for organization you have more than one meaning. Organization uh, primarily would mean um, a sense of organization. If you're described as organized, this is obviously a good uh, adjective or a good quality. So you, I would, when I say, for example, that Fairuz or Ahmed uh, is well organized. Okay, so everything is trim, every, everything is tidy, he comes on time, he leaves on time, stuff like this is organized. Um, and the other meaning would be organization is like a, um, an institution or a company. Okay, and then you have the word situation, uh, and the verb would be um, situate. Uh, we don't use it as a verb, uh, I mean, its frequency is not very high. I mean, we use it uh, as perhaps part, part, 
uh, of a passive structure. Let's say uh, Riyadh is situated in uh, um, the center of Saudi Arabia, for example. Uh, when I say, for example, Jeddah is situated uh, in 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 the west of Saudi Arabia, okay, situated. And then you have the word transmission, and the verb would be to transmit. To trans to transmit is to kind of transfer or send a radio waves and stuff like that. And finally, you have the word behavior. What is the verb from behavior? I'm asking you. What would be the verb from behavior? Any idea? Perhaps behave. Behave. So from behavior, you have the verb behave. Am I correct? Oh, okay. Uh, we spoke about the word mass media and we said that the word mass is a prefix and if it comes before a word it would mean big in big numbers so when I say mass media so it's obviously the media that addresses uh, the masses the masses uh, are the people and the people are so many right when I say mass production mass production so mass so it's production you know what production means and mass it means that the production is in huge quantities okay okay again Uh, we spoke about linking words, if you still remember them. I don't know why they just uh, don't stop. Can you see them? Okay. So we, we spoke enough about linking words and phrases. We spoke long enough about, you know, what we uh, uh, called signposts, okay, and transition words and phrases. And we said these words and, and these phrases are very important. Uh, you cannot imagine uh, a presentation or a piece of writing without them they have to be there and they have functions to play what is it that they do in uh, in a presentation for example they do they make all the difference unless you have them you get lost as a listener or as a hearer you also get lost if you're reading uh, a passage or a piece of writing that does not have signposts remember so but however on the one hand on the other hand to sum up, um, furthermore, okay, they establish logical relationships between the sentences and among the paragraphs like we agreed. Still remember that? I think you still remember. Okay. So what is it that we're using them for this time around, if we have spoken enough about them? So why are we using them this time around? We're using them because they also... Uh, help us predict content expect what is uh, coming ahead so if you if you hear the word however in a tutorial for example tutorial means uh, a class like this one if you hear the word however you can almost expect what the teacher is going to say okay you expect the teacher to say to 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 say something that is different from what he said before before however i mean when you hear the word therefore remember therefore it connects two sentences or two paragraphs and the relationship between the sentence that is before uh, 
therefore, and the sentence that comes after, uh, therefore, uh, they have a, re a logical relationship of cause and effect. Remember, Ali did not come. Uh, Ali felt sick an hour before the class. He felt sick an hour before the class. Therefore, he decided not to come to class. Okay, so you have therefore in the middle, and it tells you that there is a relationship shape of cause and effect. What is the cause? The cause is that he felt sick. What is the uh, uh, effect? What is what is the result? The result that he decided not to come to class. Okay, so whether you're using therefore, whether you're using uh, so whether you're using as such. So these are transition words and phrases. These are linking words and phrases that can tell you that what comes after them is an effect. So if you hear them in a tutorial, you know that what comes after would be an effect, right? But if you hear words like but, words like however, okay? Ali, that's the same example, but I'm going to use uh, however or but Ali felt sick two hours before the class however he decided to come to the class but he decided to come to the class yet he decided to come to the class okay there is a contradiction right if you feel sick if you don't feel okay you stay you stay at home you don't come to class but he came to class. So the relationship before uh, but and however and yet, right? The sentence that comes before them and the sentence that comes after have a relationship of contrast or contradiction. You feel astonished or you feel surprised, right? Uh, are you getting my idea? So again, we're using them, we're using these words, uh, to uh, kind of predict, predict means to expect what uh, the, the, the upcoming sentence uh, means, okay, without even uh, hearing it yet, okay? Okay, good. Okay, so let's read about that. So predicting content from linking words. So predict would be a synonym for the word expect okay so you predict you expect so predicting content content is whatever people say right whatever you say uh, what i'm saying now is content right from linking words so you have the linking word and before i utter or say something you can almost expect what i'm going to say based on these linking words like i said but, however, in addition, so, because, and the list is obviously uh, bigger than that. Okay. So, speakers, let's read it. Speakers often introduce the next piece of information in a talk. Um, so, examples. So, when you have mass, it means big. So, so mass media, so, I mean, he's explaining the word mass. And then he used the word so. Okay, so you expect that after so, he's going to give us uh, some kind of effect or result, right? So, like we said, is like therefore, right? Remember, like as such. So, mass media, mass means big, so, and then he's going to uh, explain. So, you don't have to hear what he or she says after so. You can almost tell, right? Logically. So mass media reaches a large number of people. This is what he said. If it, if it means big, uh, it means uh, so mass media reaches a large number of people. Uh, if you use the word in fact, for example, okay? Uh, so listen for words and phrases to help you predict the function of the next information. Okay, remember, we, we need to debunk the myth that says that you have to understand every single word 
that you have to hear every single word in, in a tutorial. If the a tutorial is in English, for example. Right? Don't have to. From these words, you can tell what uh, what you are in for, what, what comes next. Even if you don't understand what comes next. At least you understand the logical relationships between the sentences and among the paragraphs. And this can help you a great deal. Okay? So let's let's have uh, we have a gallery or a list of words, uh, phrase and phrases. We're familiar with them, but um, uh, uh, we, we'll talk about them because obviously uh, uh, their function this time around is different. Their function was um, it depends on whether you you are presenting or you are the the one who uh, uh, to whom the presentation is given. Uh, okay. So listen for words and phrases to help you predict the function of the next information. And we have it. So but and, and however, like I said, if you have but and however and you have a sentence before, you can always expect what comes after. And they, of course, indicate uh, uh, contrast, difference, uh, contradiction. So they mean what? Uh, I mean, or you understand that what comes after them is contrary, opposite. Uh, so you have a contrary, opposite point. Okay? It's, it's not an agreement like we're going to see in uh, perhaps uh, uh, other uh, words. So whenever you have and or in addition, okay, so you have more information, right? So you expect to have more information on and about the same. Uh, when you have so, when you have therefore, right? When you have as such, when you have as a result, you have after after them you have the result. You have an effect or result. Whenever you have because, you know that after because you have reason. Ahmad didn't come to school today because he was sick so after because you have the reason why ahmed didn't come to school in fact or actually uh, they indicate that there is other information uh, coming up on the same uh, subject do i make sense <clears throat> Okay, and this is a very interesting exercise. Um, uh, let's let's do it. It's a good practice. So, using linking words and phrases, complete these extracts from a lecture. This is a lecture, and I'd like to make a distinction before I start this exercise. I think uh, um, a distinction is due here between a lecture and a, tu a tutorial. I think I spoke about them at one point. Uh, so a lecture, which of them is bigger? A lecture or a tutorial? So the two of them are classes that teachers give, whether we're talking about a lecture or a tutorial. The difference perhaps would have to do with the number of students. Okay? In a lecture you have hundreds of students. Uh, perhaps in a bigger uh, room, I mean, uh, can be even an auditorium, right? But with tutorials, you normally have smaller. If, if, if I talk about tutorials, I'm, to, I'm talking about small classes. Okay. So this is basically the difference. So let's go back to the exercise. So complete these extracts from a lecture about mass media news. So the lecture is on or about mass media news. Write a linking word or phrase from the box in each space. You can use the same word or phrase more than once. Okay, I'll give you perhaps two minutes for uh, three minutes because it's, uh, it's long. So go through them, do them. Establish a logical relationship between the two sentences first. The sentence... Uh, the two sentences where uh, um, there is going to be a linking word in the middle. 
So once you establish this logical and reasonable relationship, you can choose the right word or the right phrase, linking word or phrase. Okay, like I said, I'm giving you three minutes. Uh, let me know when you have finished. Perhaps you need to kind of type one or something. I guess I need to switch this off. <clears throat> okay. Okay, so Ahmed is done. Okay. So let's do let's do them. So at one time there was no mass media news. Why? Because people couldn't read. So the relationship is uh, um, a relationship of um, reason and result. Okay, so the reason was there was no mass media. Uh, the result, uh, the reason was people couldn't read. So the result was um, uh, that there was no mass media news, or the other way around. So there are many advantages. I am only going to talk about three. Okay, good. So it's but or however. Okay. Let me tell you, what's the difference? Are they interchangeable, but and however? In meaning, they are interchangeable. But when it comes to putting them in sentences, there is obviously a difference. Okay? If you have a full stop after the, full, the first sentence and you have another sentence, you use however. If you have a comma and you're continuing the same line of thought, you use but. So what can you see here? You see a comma or a full stop? You see a comma. In this case, you're going to use but. Okay? So there are many advantages, but I'm, I'm going to talk about three. So many and only three. So there is obviously a contradiction or a difference, and that's why we're using but. Okay, number three. Mass media news reaches people very quickly. Space, there are reporters in every country. So, or because, what do you think? I think it's because. Why? Why does mass media reach people very quickly? Right? You need to ask yourself these questions. So, mass media news reaches people very quickly. Why? Because there are reporters in every country okay and you're going to add more information in this case you would add uh, uh, you, you would use in fact or actually the two of them are interchangeable okay so in fact we have very fast communication news or actually we have very fast uh, communication um, okay uh, by the way you can also use uh, in addition, but um, uh, in addition here is not capital. But that's I mean even in fact I mean in addition can also 
in addition can also be used by the way uh, okay number four it is very cheap to receive television and radio programs nowadays mass media news is very cheap and then a new sentence the consumer does not pay for news directly at all advertising pays for so it is very cheap to receive television and radio programs nowadays because you're going to use because mass media news is very cheap okay so you're going to say and it's a new sentence it's a new line of thought in fact the consumer does not pay for news directly at all uh, advertising pays for the news at one at one time governments or people in public life could keep secrets nowadays mass media reporters find out secrets okay so we're starting a sentence in this case you can use at one time governments or people in public life could keep secrets however however nowadays mass media reports find out secrets and pro, uh, pro, uh, broadcast them to the world okay so there is obviously a contradiction between what governments used to do in the past and what is happening now that's why we're using however and the the, the reason why we're using however is because we're starting a new sentence <clears throat> at one time governments or people in public could keep without we did that nobody can keep a secret anymore there are reporters everywhere and there is twitter and facebook and so on because there are uh, reporters everywhere and there is twitter and facebook and so on but some secrets are good because people uh, need uh, privacy sometimes but You can simply say um, in fact or actually right uh, okay let's move on <clears throat> so some TV news channels are on twin are on 24 hours a day so if they are on 24 hours a day okay they need news stories all the time so 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 they need news new stories all the time eight mass media mass media news is uh, is cheap for the consumer it is expensive for the mass media company no the can you see cheap in one sentence and expensive in the other you have a, a difference or a contradiction it is cheap for people or for the consumer but it is expensive for the mass media company right there is a difference or a contradiction okay uh, you cannot use however yeah Nashua because you don't have a full stop in the first sentence right nine nine one minute of news can cost twenty thousand uh, dollars the news company has to sell advertising during the news uh, broadcasts so one minute of news can cost uh, twenty thousand dollars okay the news company has to sell advertising during the news broad so you're going to say so the news company has to sell advertising during no 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 because it's no so it's very expensive okay so because it's very expensive they have to do something which is uh, selling advertising during uh, the news uh, broadcasts so it's a so kind of thing so one minute of news can cost twenty thousand dollars so 
the news company has to sell advertising during the news I think I have them let me check if, can, if I can share them with you I'm in the file yes can you look at them look at them read them read them on your own I'll give you perhaps a minute or two to check them So is that clear? Okay. Done? Should we move somewhere else? Okay. 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 So what we have here, we have the adverbs vary a lot and enough. And obviously they come, if you have an adverb, the adverb comes before an adjective. So why would I use an adverb before an adjective in order to do it? Perhaps it. Uh, it would stress something, it would enhance uh, uh, the force of something. When I say, for example, uh, cold, okay, this, this place is cold, so cold is cold, yeah. yeah, I mean you understood that it is cold, but if I say it is very cold, the very here is an adverb, right, and it, it is before the word cold, which is an adjective. So, there is obviously a difference between cold and very cold, right? Are you getting the idea? There is also a difference between very cold and too cold. Okay? So, very and too um, and a lot and much. These are adverbs. We use them in order to enhance and uh, perhaps to make something prominent whether we're talking about quantities whether we're talking about opinions and stuff like that uh, i think you have a problem if you cannot hear me um, go out and can, can you hear me now i'll talk about it in a minute yeah, can you hear me now everyone okay Okay, so now that we have established the fact that adverbs like very and to come before uh, an adjective and they would uh, add um, something, they can add a negative meaning, for example. <clears throat> when I say uh, that the tea is hot and I say the tea is too hot, so when I say to, to normally gives a negative meaning. It gives it, it points to the inab the inability to do something. Okay? So when I say something is expensive, when I when I say this car is 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 expensive, it's expensive, but uh, perhaps I can afford it, I can buy it. But if I say this car is too expensive, I am indicating that I cannot buy it. So this is the meaning of two. When I say that the ceiling is high, 
so high but perhaps I can reach it but if the if, if I say that the ceiling is too high you are telling people that you cannot reach it can you see the difference difference if I lose because you would ask him okay so when I say the lesson the lesson is difficult so uh, if it's difficult it means that uh, perhaps if I study it more than once I can understand it but if I said that the lesson is too difficult uh, people will will understand that you may need help uh, the teacher uh, perhaps can help because you cannot understand it on your own is that clear okay uh, the opposite would be the word not enough uh, when, when when we spoke about the ceiling for example when I say that the ceiling is not uh, high enough if I uh, if I say that the ceiling is not high enough I'm indicating to uh, um, somebody that you can reach it okay when um, Uh, let me give you another example uh, it will come we have so many examples here okay so let's talk about them so very a lot to and enough we can use very or a lot to say large amounts right you know that when you use very or a lot to say a large amount. this television is very expensive again it would require a lot of money right uh, it costs a lot of money okay we used to and enough to give an opinion about the amount yeah to give an opinion and perhaps to say whether you can uh, um, you can afford something or not when we say uh, this television is too much money so to here says it all if you use to it gives a negative uh, um, indication that you cannot do something so when I say this television is too is much money okay perhaps I can afford it but if I say this television is too much money I am telling people that um, guys I cannot afford it I cannot whenever you have to you have this cannot kind of thing okay <clears throat> um, so I haven't got enough money to buy it. this is what you understand when I say too much money uh, you always need to remember that with um, much you talk about um, uncountable nouns nouns that you cannot count okay um, of course much and if used to before it that would be the same if uh, we're talking about countable nouns that are plural we use many and of course you can use to before it okay so what I want you to do now is I would like you to look at these exercises and use so we're going to give your opinions about television using too much or too many uh, uh, or not enough can you do that yeah Nashua uh, my voice I think is clear um, you have I don't know what is happening with you uh, guys can you all hear me let's let's check whether you can all hear me or not Yeah, okay, Fairuz is uh, asking Nashua to check her internet, which means that the problem is on Nashua's end. Okay, good. Okay, so what is it that we need now? We need to use either too much, too many, or not enough. I'll give you uh, two minutes for that. It is easy. Again, this is all logical you need to put your mind to them don't just mechanic mechanically answer them you have to establish 
uh, relation, logical relationships within the sentence so that you can come up with the right answer. You know, go ahead. Two minutes, perhaps, because it's not that difficult. We're only 14. Can somebody volunteer uh, and go to the group and announce the fact that we are having a class right now? Perhaps they, they didn't get the message. They were absent last time or something. Can we do that? Can can we have a volunteer that can just... Uh, can go, uh, okay, Fairus, thank you so much. Okay. Uh, this is easy. We wouldn't be spending the rest of our lives doing it because it's easy, obviously. So there is news on TV. It's on. It's on 24 hours a day, on about 30 channels. So what? What are you going to use? There is enough news on TV. It's on 24 hours a day. Uh, you don't need, uh, you need to use not enough. So enough is fine, if I use, but this is not what we want. So like Rahaf is saying, too much news. Because we're talking about 30 channels. Because, uh, we're saying that it is on 20, uh, 24 hours a day, right? Okay, the reason why, uh, thank you Bandar and Rahaf, let me explain why we're not using too many. Because news is not countable, right? Uh, I think you're familiar with that. Don't ever say too many news. The no, news is not countable. So that's why we're using too much. Thank you so much. Let's move on. There are films. I really love films, especially comedies. Um, two two possibilities, as a matter of fact, you can you can say there are too too many films. I really love films, especially comedies. Or you can say there are, or you can say, can we say there are not enough films? Can can it work? Two, yeah, it can work too, right? There are not enough films. I really love films, especially comedies. So the two of them are correct. You can simply say there are too many films or you can say there are not enough films. So grammatically, the two of them are correct. So there are hours in the day to watch TV. I have space work. So obviously we have somebody who is complaining. You can you can almost feel it that he is complaining about something, and this can be a good clue for you. So there are. He's trying to say that there are too many, or there aren't enough. There aren't enough hours in the day to watch TV. Now look at the second sentence. The second sentence can help you a great deal. So there aren't enough hours in the day to watch TV. I have, okay, I have what? Too much work. I have too much work. By, by the way, the word work is not countable. That's why we're using much with it. Okay. So there, there aren't enough hours in the day to watch TV. I have too much work. Too much work. Okay. So there are channels. 
there are space channels I can get 200 on my system and they are all rubbish again I just want to make sure that you're doing the sentence that I am doing okay we're starting and there are there are many or too many there are too many channels there are too many channels I can get 200 on my system and they are all rubbish too many right okay there are space ad adverts advertisements there, there are at least five uh, ad breaks every hour there are there are write write it again if you have written it already there are uh, we don't need uh, yeah uh, a lot is fine if yeah, I but we don't need a lot we need too much we need too many uh, or not enough okay there are two no Ad and advertisements are countable, yeah, zikra. If they are countable, you need many, not much. Okay, so too many adverts. So there is sport on TV. I, I hate football and tennis and golf. Too much excellent, yeah, Ahmed. There is too much sport. Sport here is not countable. Too much sport. Thank you. There are programs about the arts. I love music, painting, and the theater. Okay, there are programs about the arts. There are... Um, no, um, I mean, I, I, would, I would say too many or not enough, but no, never too much, uh, Ahmed. Okay, we're talking about programs, and programs are countable, mind you. Okay, so I can say there are not enough programs about the arts, or I can say there are too many programs, but never, never say... Uh, uh, too much uh, or much programs because obviously programs is countable and with countable nouns that are plural you use many not much okay interesting and and now we move to the speaking part and the speaking part is going to be all about advertising spoke about advertising last time when we introduced the theme and we said that uh, advertising and mass media and media in general are quite related they are relevant to each other <clears throat> so we spoke about the advertising business right uh, okay uh, we said that we have different types and different styles of adver uh, advertising too, remember? Uh, in newspapers you would have ads, advertisements or advertisements and adverts, okay? On, on TV and on the ra radio you would have commercials, it's the same meaning, commercials or TV commercials, okay? So, we're going to talk about uh, magazine advertisements or advertisements. Last time I said uh, you can say advertisement or advertisement. That they have the same meaning. So, what is it that we're doing now? We're looking at the magazine advertisements uh, on the right. Can you see them? So, how many advertisement can you see how many ads can you see three very good you can you can see three uh, of them right okay 
Uh, okay. So what is each advertisement selling? What is each selling? Obviously, when you have an advertisement, it sells something. It promotes. It promotes something, right? So what is it that the first? Or what is it that each one of them uh, are promoting? Let's take let's take them one at a time. So the first one is promoting or is selling makeup is selling cosmetics. You don't have to say makeup cosmetics because the word cosmetics uh, uh, has this makeup inside it. Okay. So you can say cosmetics or makeup uh, or makeup uh, products, for example. Okay. So how about the second one? So what does it sell? What does it promote? Vacations, like Fairuz is saying, it promotes and sells vacations. Nice. Uh, yeah, traveling and all. How about the third one? Trips, yeah. Zikra is saying trips. That's good. Okay, how about the third the third one? What what does uh, what does it sell or promote? Houses, property. Sometimes you call it real estate or real estates, right? Uh, okay. So what stereotypes does each uh, advert show? Each one of them is showing um, a stereotype. Uh, perhaps we need to explain what a stereotype is. A stereotype is a false or incorrect generalization about something. Generalization, when you say all uh, people, uh, um, all, Af I mean, let me give you, all Africans are bad, for example. Okay. Um, all Americans are fat. Um, all English are white. All animals are bad. Are you getting the idea? I don't want to talk about nationalities. Like sometimes uh, people would judge a whole nationality saying this nationality is bad. This is called a stereotype. I'm asking you, is this good, everyone? When you generalize, is, is, is it good? No, it's not. Ahmad is saying it's not, and uh, Zekra and everybody else is saying it's it's not good. This is called a stereotype. Okay. So, do we have stereotypes in these these uh, different ads? Remember, we have three ads. Let's let's focus on the first one. What is the stereotype in uh, picture one in the ad in in ad one? What do you think? Do we have stereotypes in add one? Um, yani, I don't know. Uh, perhaps you don't. You you didn't understand what I meant with uh, with uh, with a stereotype. That's why you're not answering. You're not answering because you didn't understand what a stereotype is, or because you don't. I mean, you don't see any stereotypes in the first uh, ad. <clears throat> okay. Yes, what? Uh, 
Tyrese is saying like not everyone good. Uh, yes, I mean, um, uh, in add to the, the promotion, they are promoting vacations, and it's, I mean, they are making it seem that if you go on vacation, all your problems will be solved, right? In picture one, you have a woman using a lipstick. I mean, they are, perhaps they are indicating that unless unless you put a lipstick you uh, I mean you wouldn't be uh, pretty or beautiful uh, or, or you also have this stereotype about women as being obsessed with cosmetics this is also a stereotype that lots of people are um, you know promoting or talking about when it comes to women they have to use makeup and um, okay, so this is also a negative stereotype. So ads like these are promoting and are, uh, you know, using these stereotypes and they are taking advantage of them, which is obviously very bad. Okay. So let's let's move to be studying a model. We look at the at this conversation from a tutorial about advertising in magazines. So there is a conversation within a class, and what is it that they are talking about? They are talking about advertising in magazines. Okay. So discuss the meaning of the words in in bold and the before we read the conversation and perhaps figure out uh, the gaps. Let's look at the bold where well, there are words that are in bold. Can you see them like target audience purpose? Look at them and see if you know their meanings. And if you need help with any of them, we can always uh, offer this kind of help. So we have target audience, purpose, persuade, image, created, and design. Okay, so you need help with any of them. Okay. Uh, even if you don't need any help with any, I, I will explain some of them. The word, uh, the the phrase, for example, target audience. Okay, so we know individually we know the two words. We know target, target like a goal or aim. What is your target from the class? Your target from the class is to understand. This is your aim or your target or goal. What is your goal in joining the Arab Open University? What is your target is to have a degree after four years, right? This is your target. Okay. Audience, audience people who watch something, right? If you watch TV, you are audience. If you watch uh, a match, your audience, right? Uh, if you're using the internet and somebody is saying something, is saying, is even selling you something, you are his audience, his or her audience. So target audience means the audience that advertising companies target they make these people their goals they want them to go and buy the product or the service okay so in business if somebody is selling you a service or a product you are his or her target audience okay so before selling of course they are going to uh, promote the product they are going to make ads and advertisements so you become the target does it do do I make sense
Okay. So purpose. What is the purpose of the ad? The purpose of the ad means why they are putting the ad. So purpose is answering the question why. So what is the purpose of attending class today? Why are you attending class? Why are you attending the this English class? So you're going to say to say uh, I mean to understand stuff, right? To speak English, right? For this is your purpose. So every ad or every ad advertisement has a purpose. And the purpose, of course, is to sell the product or the service, right? Okay. And then we move to the word persuade. Yeah, okay. So per persuade means to convince somebody of something. To get somebody to do something for you. Okay. So I may need to persuade you to have another extra class. Persuade means that I do everything I can to convince you, to get you to agree. And I say, listen, we're going to meet on Friday. And this is difficult. People find it difficult to attend classes on Friday, right? If I start to persuade you, listen, you're going to like it. We're, we're going to have so many exercises. I, I'll have have you talk and it's going to be fun this is persuading somebody to do something okay are you getting the idea so if you have advertisers in advertisements they persuade you to do what they persuade you to buy the service or the product am I making sense Okay, and then you have the word create. Create means to make, to make something from scratch. Something didn't exist before and you created it. Okay, so with ads, they create ads. They create, they make an ad, right? And then you have design, to design an ad. Right? To design an ad means that you put it in a certain way, you put colors in, in, in different proportions and stuff like that. Am I making sense? Okay. So now what? Now we're going to go all the way to uh, the script at the back of the book and read the conversation so that you can make sense of what is happening. So this is 3.9. Let me go all the way to 3.9, everyone. So 3.9, 3.9. Yeah, we have it here. Yeah, read it. You have voice A and voice B. Can you see them? on the screen okay I'll, I'll give you perhaps two minutes to read the conversation and after we're done we can always go back to the theme
Okay, done. Hello. Finished. Okay, I would like you to check the words that you don't understand in this conversation. Okay, go through the conversation and see if you uh, meet or encounter difficult vocab items. You know what cosmetics um, is? The word cosmetics. Cosmetics means makeup products, you know, lipsticks and powder and eyeliners and, and eyeshadows. I know about the. <laughs> I'm sorry, I know about that and the, you know, these things because <laughs> because of my. I have two daughters and they keep. Talking about eyeliners and eyeshadows and stuff like this. Otherwise, I wouldn't have known about them. Uh, okay, so cosmetics uh, would be the makeup products. Any other words? Go oh, say something, Egema. Say no. I mean, just say no. It's as simple as this. Just sim say no so that we can move on. Okay, good. Good, yeah, Malak. Thank you for saying no. Uh, it's the same words. I, I would like you to look at the words in the box, the vocabulary box, and see also if you need help with any of them. So advertising agency, cosmetic or cosmetics, uh, create, design, feel, image, magazine, message, persuade, purpose, reality, represent stereotype and target audience um, I think I spoke about stereotypes but I'm going to speak about them again because Ahmad doesn't seem to have understood the meaning of the word now, st stereotypes are negative opinions about a group of people okay uh, preconceived ideas and misconceptions and false perceptions if you like when I say uh, again I, I give you a number of examples you may have a bad experience with somebody from a certain country and you say and you generalize you come and say listen all and I'm not going to give a nationality. I'm sorry. All the people from this country, that country, are bad. This is called a stereotype. Okay, like what, what, what we're seeing happening now in, in the USA, for example. I mean, whites keep saying that African Americans are all bad, are all violent. But this is a stereotype, right? Uh, are you are you getting the idea? Ah, uh, yes, yes, yeah, Malak, yeah, 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 I'm, I'm, yani. yes. Okay. So, what is the stereotype in the first ad? 
the stereotype in the first ad uh, about uh, this woman who is putting makeup, uh, putting lipstick. The stereotype is about women that they don't they, they, they don't feel confident unless they put makeup. Is that correct? Of course not. Right? This is stereotype and this is negative. Okay. Um, the second, perhaps, stereotype is about uh, having a house, having your own proper, uh, property, as if having a house would solve all your problems. Is, that, is this correct? No, obviously there is more to life and the enjoyment of life than just having a property or having a house. Okay, so you're getting the idea. Alhamdulillah. Let's move somewhere else. So what is it that we're having here? So look at the pictures above, which we did. No, we didn't. Look, look at the pictures above. Which areas of the media are they examples of? So remember when we spoke about media and we said that media is so big. So these are different areas of the media. Okay, let's give them label. What are these different um, areas? Let's take them one at a time. The first one is what? Yeah, movies, television, yes. TV, yes. Okay, the second one? What is the area? I'm not talking about what people are doing. Photography? Do you think photography is part of the media? Yeah, if you work as a, a reporter where you, you'll have to do, or you have to, you know, uh, take pictures. See what's happening in C. Yeah. Uh, publishing publications of books and others D D yeah I know he is a student what what area what is he what is it that um, this is newspaper business like Zekra is saying so this is the area is newspaper right E <clears throat> Um, e, e, <coughs> I think E and F are magazines, right? Okay. Really, how often do you use each area? Perhaps let's focus on the first one. Whenever the question is how often the answer would be once, twice, always, never. So these are typical answers. When we talk about television, so how often? You can say once a week, um, twice uh, a week for example, one, we say once, twice, right? We say always, we say never, okay? So when you say one, what, what does it mean, Yazikra one? Never. Fairuz is saying she never um, uses television or watches television, okay? So which of them you uh, always uh, use, yeah, Fairuz? So the opposite of never would be always. So which of them you always use? Uh, 
<clears throat> what is it? Phone or laptop? Yeah, which brings you to the internet, right? Okay. Okay. Okay, Isaac. Thank you so much. Okay. So what is it that we're, we're doing now? Which questions below goes with each conversation? We have a number of small exchanges. I, I told you that when you have a conversation, the conversation can be big. If it's big, we call it a conversation. If it's small, we call it um, an exchange or a transaction. So we have transactions here or exchanges. So how many exchanges can you see? How many transactions can you see? Say, hmm, how many? One, two, three, I can see six of them, right? What's wrong? These are small exchanges, like I said. Okay, so let's, uh, like I said, I would like you to match, uh, take uh, these questions and put them where they belong in these different exchanges or small conversations. And I'll give you perhaps two minutes for that. Go ahead. Okay, please let me know when you finish. Hello. Okay, so let's do them. So uh, the first exchange or transaction, A is saying something, B is saying no, the shop has run out. A, there is an article on the Milan Fashion Week. Uh, I'll get one tomorrow. So it's going, I mean, uh, no, it's A. Have you seen the new Vogue? Vogue is the name of a magazine, and they are talking about a magazine, by the way. So it's A. So have you seen the new Vogue? No. The shop has run out. The shop has run out means that it, I mean, the, the cubbies are no longer there. They, he went and he checked, and the shop owner or the shop assistant said, we don't have it anymore. There is an article on the Milan Fashion Week. So you have fashion, you have a magazine. Okay, I'll get one tomorrow. Let's move to the second one. Uh, A is saying something. B is saying yes. I saw it in the literature magazine. What do you think? I think it was a bit biased. Uh, we're talking about literature, and literature uh, literature is about books, is about novels, is about poetry, right? So it it has to be. D, have you read the review of the book? 
have you read the review of the book yes I saw it in the literature magazine what 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 do you think I think it's it was a bit biased so two new words or three new words we have here we have the word literature and literature means poetry drama novels stories okay short stories this is called literature okay this is one thing the second word that we have is the word review to give or make a review of a book you read a book and you write a review you write a few lines perhaps a paragraph about the book you and you uh, register what you have seen uh, what you have read in the book whether you like it or not whether you you're happy with what is what was presented in the book this is called the book review okay so two things now you have literature and you have review and you have the word biased so what is bias bias is also negative like stereotyping and bias means that you are against somebody or something uh, for not for objective reasons you you're saying bad stuff about something but you don't have objective reasons you don't have good justifications and good reasons this is called bias am I making sense sometimes you read a book but, but you know that this book was written by uh, perhaps somebody from a nationality that you don't like okay and then when you write you write negative stuff this is called bias and sometimes you have animosity sometimes you have animosities and hatred between men and women if a woman writes a book and uh, um, uh, um, a woman hater for example, somebody who doesn't like women let's say and he writes a reviews here he, uh, a review and when he writes the review is going to be biased biased against women he's going to to say bad stuff about the book are you getting the idea okay so let's move on three that's awful uh, some uh, a is saying something and B is saying that that awful thing on channel 7 about cinema that awful thing on ch channel 7 about cinema yes didn't you like it no I didn't think much of it so this is obviously B. Did you see that that documentary? Excuse me, last night. Okay, four. A is saying something. Uh, B is saying TV and film mostly. How about you? Photography. That's interesting. So it's going to be C. What sort of media do you work with? TV and film mostly. How about you? Photography. That's interesting. Five, five, five. Yes, every day. Do you have a favorite? Do you have a favorite? No, I like to read all the different styles. But this is going to be. Do you read the papers? Yes, that's going to be E. Do you read the papers? Yes, every day. Do you have a favorite? No, I like to read all the different styles. And finally, you have six. A is saying something. B yes. When when is it on? It starts tomorrow for three months. Good. I really like his stuff. So, are you going to see the rampant rampant exhibition? Okay. Are you getting the idea? This is going to be F. Let's move on. okay this is interesting and this is very relatable it's about something that we do whenever we have courses and classes what is it it's uh, uh, taking part in a tutorial 
so by now you know what a tutorial is right we said that tutorial is a class like the one uh, that we're having right now okay so before you that tutorial you're supposed to do something during that tutorial you're supposed to do something and even after that tutorial you're supposed to do something i'll call i'll call them uh, pre-tutorial stuff uh, 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 during or while uh, uh, um, during tutorial stuff and post tutorial stuff I, I think you're familiar with these words by now you pre pre means before and of course during means during while doing something and post means after so let's talk about the stuff that you do before the tutorial before the class this is called pre so what is it that you do before the class if any about the class I'm talking about the class yeah Faruz is saying we prepare absolutely okay how do you prepare okay good you go through perhaps the book you know for example that we are not done with theme 3 okay so you go to theme 3 and go through it okay you perhaps study what we have taken before and then you prepare what we are going to take right sometimes you meet um, I mean the ideas are not too familiar to you the topics are not too familiar you can do some research right how how do people yes okay so you read the topics like Ahmad is say and sometimes you meet stuff that you are not too familiar with which is natural you and nobody knows everything so if if there is something that you don't know about in the part that you're preparing right you do some research right you go to the internet for example you ask your parents right you ask a big brother or a big sister this is all research by the way this is all doing research and it doesn't have to be the internet if you consult somebody this is doing research in and of itself okay Fine. Uh, okay so you have done research you have prepared um, and you have looked at the topics that the theme is presenting you start to form an opinion okay you start to form an opinion for example today we're talking about stereotypes and we're, we're talking about negative image about women and about old people right so you form you you read about that you read about stereotypes you read about bias and media bias and then you form your opinion you, so that when when I come and ask you say listen I don't agree with this idea those th these people are saying negative stuff about women and old people or uh, black people and I don't accept this is an opinion that you're giving your opinion is normally based on what you have done in terms of research, in terms of preparation. You cannot have an opinion unless you have done some research, you have read about something, right? Okay. Fine. So before a tutorial, you research the topic. Okay, you do you do research. Uh, let's say that the topic is the influence of television on, on children okay this is the topic that uh, perhaps next time the teacher will talk about during the tutorial so you do some research about that the influence influence means the effect of television on children and then you form an opinion you say uh, yeah the 
the influence is tremendous the influence of tradition uh, of television on children is tremendous is so big and is so negative this is what you think okay okay so you come to the class what is it that you do during the tutorial okay look at what happens here this is a tutorial and we are during the tutorial so what is it that you're doing you talk I mean I say things and then you st uh, there is a conversation going on and you're part of this conversation and sometimes I ask you questions and you answer you give your opinion about something right you share your opinion you participate you share your opinion remember so during uh, um, the tutorial you must give your opinion if it's about the same topic the topic that you spoke about the influence of television on children you say for example I think television is a bad influence on children this is what you think okay but it wouldn't be enough to say uh, uh, I think television is bad or television is good you need so together with giving your opinion you need also to give reasons to give justifications why you think what you think if you think that television is a bad influence you need to tell us why if you think it's a good influence you need to also share with us your reasons for saying so am i making sense okay so during tutorials you give your opinion you give reasons for your opinion and and finally you give examples that support your opinion and support your reasons am I making sense and this is exactly what you're doing but you don't know that you're doing it we're doing it uh, intuitively and automatically which is good okay uh, perhaps uh, being conscious about it would, would be even better okay okay nice see this is a tutorial for example this is obviously before corona where the I mean, teachers are there and you have students and everything right and then people engage in conversations uh, Malex, I don't understand like what, for example. Um, I don't understand you. We're talking about what people, what, what students do before, during, and uh, perhaps after tutorials, after classes. We said that before tutorials and before classes, you do research you uh, you know that it's theme three you go and and do some research on theme three uh, if it has topics uh, um, you uh, look at the topics study them and perhaps you would need help you go to the internet uh, you check with your parents you check with um, whoever okay so this is called research and then you come to the class during the class uh, uh, people would uh, I mean the teacher can ask you questions and you answer them you start a conversation with the teacher or he starts the conversation you guys all engage in the conversation and you give your opinion okay about something let's say for example you think that television is good whether it's for children or for uh, I mean adults anybody so you you say I think television is good okay again you give it your opinion but you also need to say why why you think television is good okay and then after you say why television is good you give an example you say for example television I think television is good okay um, um, uh, it can help uh, students uh, for example uh, watch um, I mean educational uh, stuff and they can acquire language and become better uh, perhaps English speakers 
and then you go to the exams. Say for uh, my my cousin uh, used to uh, sit in front of television, and mashallah, his English is excellent now. Okay, let's 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 get another example. If we talk about the internet, everybody, all the parents are now afraid of the internet. Okay, and the theme or the idea uh, in the tutorial is about the internet. So you come and raise your hand, saying, "Listen, I don't agree, Doctor Sam. And the internet is a very good. I um, mean, it's the best uh, the best thing that has ever happened to us. Okay, this is your opinion, and then you give reasons." Uh, um, now we, we take classes on the internet and it's fine we go and meet people otherwise it would have been very boring because we are during the corona time and then you give an example my friend uh, used the internet uh, and he is now um, he speaks more than one language because of the internet he talks to people. you see this is how we do it here uh, Malak okay is that clear? I've been to, I'm sorry, I haven't seen. I mean, you're saying that you got it. Obviously, you got it half an hour ago, and I, you kept me talking about it. It's okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's look at these words and see whether you have issues with them or not. So, agree, believe, boring, disagree entertaining, frightening, funny, opinion, properly, reason, and tutorial. Um, <clears throat> do you have issues with any of them? All, all is good? Sorry. So agree, you agree. If I say something and you agree, it means it's uh, you have the same opinion, right? Okay. Believe to think. Uh, when you say I believe, uh, Dr. Samah is correct. Uh, I don't believe that he is right. I believe this and that. Uh, I believe we should take uh, uh, more, uh, uh, perhaps, listening. Uh, I believe uh, this is giving your opinion. So, how do people give their opinion? By saying, I believe, I think, to my mind, in my opinion. The list is so big. Disagree would be the opposite of agree. You don't have to agree me uh, agree with me uh, on everything, right? We can disagree. If I say that television is good and you believe that it's not good, you say, Dr. Samah, please, I I disagree. I disagree me means I don't I don't agree. Okay. So whether you agree or disagree, you need to also give reasons, right? Uh, okay. Boring, of course. Boring. You know what boring means. Entertaining. Entertaining, by the way, is the opposite of boring. You either feel bored or you feel entertained. Okay? So what do you think of this class? I think it's boring, right? Is it boring or entertaining? Remember, I am marking your TMAs. If you say boring, you get a zero. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, okay. So uh, Fairuz is saying it's uh, entertaining, and I, I'm I'm hopeful that the others are sharing the same sentiment. So entertaining would be the opposite of boring. Entertain it means it entertains you, it amuses you. There is, uh, um, I mean, you feel relaxed. I uh, mean, you feel um, that you're. Uh, that you're entertained <laughs> okay so frightening frightening is an adjective and frightening is uh, frightening is scary when something is frightening it means it is it makes you afraid makes you scared funny funny uh, there is obviously a difference between fun and funny okay so funny is comic when something is is funny it makes you smile and love right sometimes we say for example this class is we don't say this class is funny because 
<laughs> it can be funny but it can be fun so fun can be used as an adjective okay so this this movie is a lot of fun you don't say this movie is funny unless it uh, the movie is uh, is is a comedy for example can you see the difference and of course you know what opinion is uh, properly when you do something properly this is positive properly is means in the correct way you do something in the correct way this is properly reason cause or reason and tutorial we started off defining the word tutorial we said tutorial is like a class it's small smaller than a lecture right okay good uh, I think I wanted to say something uh, I wanted to say something about adjectives because how many adjectives and look at the box the vocabulary box and you're going to see that we have different kinds of we have different adjectives okay look at them tell me how many adjectives do we have tell me how many adjectives we have here so obviously boring is an adjective entertaining is an adjective Frightening is an adjective, and funny is an adjective, right? Uh, we have four adjectives. Four, okay. Okay. So, what do we do with adjectives? Adjectives do what? They help. They help us with what? What's the difference between a car and a red car? What's the difference between man and an old man? Okay, so where are you parking your car? I'm parking it over there. Which one is your car? And when I say it's the red one so red here is an adjective and now I am able to get to the car right because it's red right red is an adjective if I, if I say it's go to the car and then you're going to ask me there are so many cars which car right okay so um, Adjectives are meant to add information. Otherwise, you you would feel lost. And I gave you the examples of man and old man. Okay, so you you visit you're visiting a place, and you're meeting a man. Okay, go and meet the man. So obviously there are so many men over there. But if I say go and meet the old man over there so I'm going to check for the old man so I'm going to kind of dismiss all uh, those who are not old right are you getting the idea okay okay so in terms of shape or in terms of form we have two two types of adjectives we have what I call dictionary adjectives. Dictionary adjectives, adjectives that have always been there in the dictionary. I didn't do any uh, thing. I didn't invent them. When I say big, obviously big has always been there. Small, tall, right? Okay. Uh, white. There is... Uh, another set of adjectives that are made up of verbs and then you add ing or ed so this is what we, what, what i call uh, perhaps speaker made adjectives speaker made because i myself do them or develop them so that they can serve my purposes like the word bore so you have the word bore and then you add ing 
or ed like the word um, entertain entertain is a verb and you add ing or you add ed okay this is not if you go to the dictionary you're going to see the word entertain or the word amuse okay and much later you can see ed or ing okay but the first entry the first dictionary entry would be uh, like i said uh, uh, the dictionary made adjective um, okay or the dictionary adjective okay so let me ask you okay you have the word boring you have the word entertaining you have the word frightening and uh, you have the word funny so which of them is a dictionary adjective that has always been there and which of them is a speaker made adjective uh, I'll, I'll give you the adjective and you tell me okay boring boring speaker made adjective i'm not going to wait okay so it's speaker made adjective right frightening look at the end of the adjectives if you have ed or ing it's a speaker made adjective right so boring we spoke about boring frightening so frightening is speaker made right entertaining speaker made look at funny funny so funny is it has always been there like this okay it's a dictionary adjective okay Fab, let me ask you what's the difference between ing and ed at the end of an adjective okay let me tell you you use you use ing forget about the past now ya ahmed you use ing to describe things and you use ed to describe people let's talk about boring okay do i say the class is boring or the class is bored Forget about this, ya yeah, zikra. This is not what we have. What we're talking about. Okay, so we say the class is boring. So ing is for things, and class is a thing. And you feel bored or boring. You feel bored or boring. You, if you, if you talk about yourself, if you, if you're describing yourself. You feel bored or boring? Hello? You feel bored, yes. You feel bored. So because you're describing yourself and you are a human being. So I need you for I need you for things and ED for people. Let me give you another example. This class is entertaining or entertained. This class is entertaining or entertained? Entertaining. And you yourself, you feel entertaining or entertained? You feel entertained, right? When you see a movie, the movie is exciting or excited when you watch a movie so if you're going to describe the movie you're going to say the movie was exciting or excited you're going to say that the movie was exciting right okay i think i have something to share with you just give me a second
just a second. Can you see that? Okay, so first of all, I would like you very quickly, right? We don't have time. So I would like you to tell me which of them is an adjective and which of them is a verb. Can we do that? Hello. Can you see that? Okay, let's do them. So number two, so fast runners win races. This fast is obviously an adjective here. Yalla, go ahead. Number two, mathematics is difficult. So difficult is an adjective or an adverb. Quickly. Mathematics is difficult. This is an adjective or an adverb. You're taking too, too long, Yagama. Adjective. Okay, number three, she's a, she's a good typist. Good here is an adjective or an adverb? She's a good typist. Adjective. She behaved rudely to her boss. She behaved rudely to her boss. This is an adjective or an adverb? Adverb. You have done well on your test. Well, well, well. So well is what? Well. Well is an ad... No. Peruz, well is an adverb. You have done well. I'm describing the verb, not the doer of the verb, mind you. Okay. So, uh, well here is an adverb. The clowns are very funny. Okay. Six, number six. So, the clowns are very funny. Funny, are very funny. This is what? This is an adjective. She is a pretty girl. She is a pretty girl. So this is what? A pretty girl. This is an adjective. He runs fast. He runs fast. Fast is what? He runs fast. It's an adverb, yes. Anne is very sad. Sad. Sad is an adverb or, or, or an adjective? Sad. Sad. Sad is an adjective yes she plays the piano beautifully she plays the piano beautifully so beautifully is beautifully is beautifully is an adverb so beautifully is an adverb father is very busy in his office busy busy is an adjective or an adverb it's an adjective. The doctor arrived immediately. The doctor arrived immediately. So immediately is, immediately is. It's an adverb, okay? So look, I don't have time to do the rest. Okay, I'll, I'll you'll have them. They are okay so you can always go back to the recordings and you can have them like we always do look at them you can always uh, pause the recording and do them on a piece of paper let's move on okay Okay. Yeah, this is the part that we're going to do together. Okay. Well, this is the part that we spoke about. Still remember? Okay. Okay. So, again, let me remind you, ED for people and ING for things. Yalla, go ahead. 
So I enjoyed the book. It was very interesting or interesting? Quickly. So I enjoyed the book. It was very interesting or interested? It was very interesting. Good. Okay. Are you interested or interesting in art? So are you interested or interesting in art? Are you interesting or interested in art? Number two, are you interested? Very good, ED for people. So I thought the story was quite amusing or amused. So uh, number three, I thought the story was quite amusing or amused. You yeah, but number three, write, tell me three, and then write ING or ED quickly. So I, I thought the story was quite amusing or amused, three. Amusing, okay, amusing. Okay, four. They were shocked or shocking when they heard the news. They were shocked or shocking when they heard the news. I mean, write the number. Write the number. Okay, so four. Okay, okay, let's move to four now. Four. Four is ED, yeah, shocked. We were all very worrying or worried. Five. 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 Worried, ED. It was surprising or surprised that she... Uh, it was surprising or su surprised that she didn't come to the meeting. Number... We're talking about six now. So it was... It was surprising or surprised? Surprising, I don't have time. Seven. I usually find football rather bored or boring. I usually find football rather... Seven, seven, seven. I usually find football rather boring. Are you frightened or frightening of spiders? Eight, are you frightened or frightening of spiders? Frightened, okay. You can always do the rest on your own, okay. I'll um, stay on, on, on the page for a second so that it gets recorded and you can get back to it um, when you study. Make sure you do them. Make sure, yani on your own, you do them, and um, I'm sure you can uh, find it, find them yani entertaining and easy. See how many of them? So many. You can perfect them and master them if you do them all on your own. Okay. I can even share the file like I always do. Okay, I think, um, yeah, this is basically what it is all about. Uh, let me go back to the book. Okay, so, so this is all what we have time for today. Um, I'll see you inshallah on Sunday like always and until then I wish you all the best. Assalamu alaikum everyone.